When it comes to the future of energy in the United States, the subject of renewables always comes up. Many want to go all in on the renewables due to wind and solar both being zero emissions. And many others are detractors who point out that both wind and solar are intermittent suppliers at best and can't provide constant power to a populace as it stands today. Is there a possible solution? Yes, and its name is Thermal Energy Storage. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm your host, Sean Kenny, and before we get started, I want to ask you to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. This tells YouTube to share a video with more people and hopefully gets more people educated and enthusiastic about cheap, clean, and efficient energy solutions. So to recap, we've previously discussed the projected increase in demand for energy, how to reduce, if not eliminate, negative ramifications of CO2 emissions with carbon capture, and of course have talked at length of the numerous benefits of adopting advanced walkaway safe molten salt reactor technology as an ideal way to combat both of these issues. One thing that we haven't discussed at length is renewables. I've talked about my thoughts on renewables in previous episodes, but for those who are new, I'm not optimistic about boutique energy sources like wind or solar replacing fossil fuels. Many of you in the comments section have expressed your doubts as to whether or not these technologies will ever be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with conventional means of energy production, which you have every right to be, seeing as these sources tend to be very much diffuse and intermittent. However, despite them not being my ideal source of energy, they are the green energy source getting the most mainstream traction right now. And I'm not so rigid that I won't work with it. If you're smart, renewables can be very useful so long as you plan ahead for their inconsistencies. When our electric grid was built, it was done so with the intention that power plants would be able to produce continued baseload electricity 24-7. For this reason, it was never intended to be shut down for extended periods, nor was it designed to flow electricity in different directions. Unfortunately, this is exactly how wind and solar tend to work. The Earth rotates so it's dark half the time, and the wind doesn't always blow. To negate this, many have discussed incorporating smart grid technologies that would enable utilities to adopt larger concentrations of wind and solar, but with this we face several issues. For starters, changing out the grid would require a significant amount of infrastructure investment from multiple public and private entities. These systems would need to transport electricity across vast distances from where it's produced to where it is needed. Ideally, this grid would also need to be able to accommodate electricity produced from residential homes that possess rooftop solar systems. The grid at present does what it can, but these intermittent renewables have not been adopted on a large enough scale to represent enough of an issue to justify an investment of this scale. The reason for this is because 95% of our electricity comes from non-intermittent power sources such as coal, gas, nuclear, hydro, and a tiny amount of geothermal in places like Hawaii and California. Now in sunny places like where I currently reside, we have a lot of renewables on the grid. But when the sun stops shining and the wind stops blowing, we use natural gas to step in and provide backup power. For solar and wind to operate 24-7, 365 without backup assistance from fossil fossil fuels, we need to be able to store excess energy when there is an abundance of production and not as much demand, and release that energy right when it is needed when the wind and solar sources aren't producing. It also needs to be cheap and easily adaptable to today's existing power grid. Only then can wind and solar operate at a large scale without assistance. Does this technology exist? Yes. And contrary to popular belief, no, batteries are not the best solution. Don't get me wrong, they work, but they aren't the best at providing continuous power. Lithium ion batteries certainly have their uses, but not in this instance. They would be drained and recharged in such a way that would cause them to degrade rather quickly and would be expensive to replace, not to mention the environmental waste that would accrue, defeating the point of waste-free power. To store this energy effectively, it needs to be a solid grid-based solution, one that can be centrally located and be able to follow the load with demand. Thankfully, there is a solution, and that solution is molten salts. Yes, and this is why I love doing this show, because the solution always falls back to it, but let me explain. I've mentioned before that salts are really good at storing thermal energy, and over the years this has been proven. Molten salt thermal energy storage systems have been used to store excess heat from solar thermal collectors. That heat gets stored in a tank using molten salt fluids, and at night they are released to make steam to generate electricity when the sun stops shining. Now it works, but the only places they have ever been practical is in the desert where these large solar towers can be installed. 
As it stands right now, you can't exactly apply this to Michigan in the wintertime, but there have been recent developments that will change the game. When we talked about Multex, we explained that Multex is an advanced nuclear startup developing their own variant of the molten salt reactor. This reactor would run on spent nuclear fuel to generate power and use the excess process heat to store thermal energy in a molten salt solution. In a 1 gigawatt SSR, you could store about 3 gigawatts of excess energy and release it over an 8 hour period to provide steady backup power for renewables on the grid. This is enough to power 2 million homes. Now this company is in the UK, but they are currently working with the Canadian regulators to deploy this technology in the next decade. Once they have achieved commercial success, it's not unlikely that we will see this approach get adopted in the United States, seeing as we have such large quantities of SNF waiting to be used. In the meantime, we may not have to wait for Maltex's patented approach to reach stateside to provide suitable backup power. TerraPower, a company in Bellevue, Washington, looking to develop advanced, fast-spectrum reactors, has already gotten sufficient funding from the likes of billionaire Bill Gates. Recently, they were one of two companies to receive disbursements of $80 million each as part of a long-term DOE grant initiative to kickstart advanced nuclear startups in the United States. What TerraPower is looking to do is generate electricity using sodium-cooled fast reactors. It will use a technology called natrium to store additional energy via their patented molten salt storage solution. The energy will be released to maximize the overall power output of the plant itself. Now, it's not a true molten salt reactor, but it also doesn't require water for cooling. And with the ability to be dispatched almost anywhere, we can provide a reasonable amount of stable backup power to meet demand, a step in the positive direction, one might say. So in an ideal use case, we can achieve a balanced grid pairing these technologies. Carbon capture plants can provide carbon neutral energy for base load and industrial applications. Once they become available, advanced nuclear reactors like the ones being developed by Moltex and TerraPower can produce even more base load power with no carbon emissions at all. And using the process waste heat as thermal energy storage, we can adopt a larger percentage of renewables like wind and solar into the grid. I plan on keeping an eye on the Department of Energy and its recent partnerships with advanced nuclear startups, and will post updates as they become available. I'm extremely hopeful for more positive developments in getting these technologies approved and incorporated into the U.S.'s long-term energy strategy. For now, I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hey, thank you so much for uh, watching today's episode. Uh, we're a new podcast, so we really appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to it. My producer, Jessica, says that I'll get a cookie uh, for every new subscriber we get. Maybe if I'm good enough, she'll let me outside. Is that good? Yeah, all right. Mmm. That's good. That's a good cookie.